Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Parish Church. This is the live stream of the fourth Sunday in Lent. And as you find yourself at home, if you wish to follow along and pray with us, the bulletin is attached in the description below. I want to go ahead and just cover the announcements at this time. So as you might know, Trinity has suspended all in-person public worship, um, with the exception of being able to live stream from the church for now. If any of you have any pastoral needs, I will still be able to be reached. Please do let us know how we can serve you as we go throughout this time of uncertainty together. Also, please now, uh, please now know that we are live streaming the daily office from Tuesday through Friday. We'll be saying morning prayer, noonday prayer, and evening prayer every single day on Tuesday through Friday. Morning prayer will be at 8 a.m., noonday will be at noon, and evening prayer will be at 5 p.m. If you find that you need some additional structure to your day, consider joining us for the holy offices of structuring your day around prayer. Um, also, please recognize that if you're unable to give your offering um, in person, you are able to exercise an option to give digitally. In the bulletin, um, in the description below, is a link to our Cash App account, um, and you can give just as simple as downloading an application onto your phone and going to our profile account that is listed in the description in the bulletin. However you want to give in support of the ministry here and giving your tithes to God, help us. Uh, we, we, can, we want to be able to be the people that you can help of going through that, and also that we can be the people who can... You, you can give through to God in that. Um, also, please recognize um, that during this time um, that I will be limiting my exposure um, going from various places to place. Um, if you need any pastoral need or have an emergency, please do give me a call. Um, I'm abiding by Unity Health's restrictions um, as it comes to their emergency department, but that doesn't mean that I'm not available. I'll probably try to be keeping up with everybody through phone, but again, if you need anything, please let the office know. We have several volunteers who are running errands for people who are unable to get out. If you are one of those people who is shut in or one of those people who wants to volunteer, please let us know how we can help you get established in this ministry. Thank you so much for joining us. The Holy Eucharist will begin in just a few minutes. <laughs>
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. first reading is from 1st Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. 
Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. Let us say together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come to me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. As Jesus walked along, he saw a, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind, so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me a while, while it is day. Night is coming, and when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. 
When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes open? He, he answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he excuse me, ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called for the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for a second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God, we know this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner, one thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. You know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came to the world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now, with, now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23 is a song that Christians for millennia have prayed in response to a number of occasions. It's probably the most recognizable song in the entire hymn book, because remember, the Psalms are the hymn book of the Bible. 
Often when we think of Psalm 23, we cannot get away from that first line. The Lord is my shepherd. This has inspired many a wonderful painting, with Jesus Christ being our shepherd, as he says in the Gospel of John, the good shepherd, looking after the sheep in a serene field. Jesus' clothes are portrayed as clean. The sheep he keeps are white and fluffy. As much as this serene imagery has meant a lot to me over the years, Psalm 23 also has a significantly deeper, harder, and more tragic setting. It's one of the psalms that many priests, myself included, have said over those who are dying. I've said over many who are hours or even minutes from dying, and have said Psalm 23, a token of assurance of the love of Jesus as our good shepherd. We even say a similar thing over the body of the beloved dead in our actual burial rites in the Book of Common Prayer. In the commendation prayer, acknowledge, O Lord, a sheep of thine own fold, a lamb of thine own flock. It is a psalm that is often prayed fervently in those last moments, where we reach out with literally all we have. We cry from the depths of our souls for those who are beloved to us to find their way to heavenly pasture, where sorrow and pain are no more, and rather there is life everlasting. It's a psalm that invokes the serenity of heaven, the verdant fields of Jesus' pasture land where he watches over us, even as it feels like we're getting swallowed in the dirt and the mud of the grave. Psalm 23 might be the best song we can possibly pray right now. Why is that? Well, let's take a, look, a closer look at the psalm itself. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 1 starts off pretty definitively. The Lord is my shepherd. This opening parallel emphasizes the complete giving over of our wills the confession of our inability to know which way to go or to take care of ourselves without God. We have no direction, no wisdom, no righteousness outside Jesus. And we, with the psalmist, have completely thrown ourselves for him, before him, and desperately need his leading in our lives. We do not know which way to go without him. And of course, I shall not want. I shall not be in want. Jesus is our provider. Such so that any need he has is provided. We who are the flock of Christ, whether we are rich or poor, young or old, sick or well, can take the ultimate solace in the truth that whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say it is well, it is well with my soul. Verse 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Now, if anyone has kept sheep before, you might know they can be some of the most nervous and easily startled creatures on God's green earth. We as sheep are so often nervous and startled by the many changes and chances of life. And the point of he makes me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the waters, is because we can only find perfect peace. That peace which passes all understanding in Jesus' loving oversight. Right paths for his name's sake. How often do we faint when we do not have the hope of Jesus? How often do we succumb when we do not know of Christ alive within us. Our souls cry out so often to God alone, and he can alone revive our souls. But Jesus doesn't just take us back up. He
He is our true guide along right paths. Again, we don't know the direction we should go. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we who have trusted in Jesus now have been given the gift of salvation through his sacrificial love and his death and his resurrection. Verse 4. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Jesus, our good shepherd, leads us through difficult terrain. Even as the valleys that overshadow us with the real threat of death, we as sheep know too well the hidden wolves and predators that lurk above the valley wall that encloses us. We know too well how close sin, death, and evil lie to us. We know too well the threat of physical evils, of plague, whether that be the H1N1 flu, whether that be SARS, whether that be the coronavirus. We know intuitively how fragile we are when facing these things. Yet Jesus does not bear the staff in vain. Jesus, the good shepherd, is also prepared to fend off predators from his flock. He is prepared with crozier in hand and his watchful eye looking out for us. That's why we don't fear even to look death in the face. Because Jesus has led us this far, and he will lead us home. Verse 5. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. As we walk through death's dark valley, so also we will find ourselves in the midst of enemies that wish us harm. And yet even when we are in the middle of them, Jesus sets his table, breaks bread, blesses wine in the cup and gives us his own self in spite of being surrounded by those who assault us. Jesus reaches out to anoint you with healing on your forehead, to heal your soul with wholeness that can only come from God. Verse 6. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And at the end, even in spite of death and our enemies and the evil that's close at hand, the goodness and mercy of Jesus will follow us even through the most difficult days. Even though we are assaulted, even so far as to be removed from our churches, removed from the Holy Sacrament, removed from the real presence in the sacramental Christ, we still, in spite of it all, confess that God will lead us back, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That even though we be away, from the consecrated and holy places that house Jesus' own presence, we still defiantly confess that God will lead us back soon. Psalm 23 is both a beautiful picture of Jesus' care for each one of us, but it is equally a cry from the depths of our souls for him to be with us. We cry out for God to so direct and lead us that we are indeed led to where we should go. Even if that place is darkened with the shadow of death close at hand. We trust in the Good Shepherd so that when we are surrounded by evil and the assaults of the devil, we fear none of those evil things but instead trust that Christ is leading us the way we should go with crozier and rod in hand to protect us. And ultimately, 
at the last we trust that when we give up our own souls to God in our own deaths, that we be led to the green pastures and still waters where we no longer need to be anxious or afraid, but instead that we can finally rest and drink from the waters of eternal life. Psalm 23 is not a pie-in-the-sky psalm about my places. Psalm 23 is a cry from the depths of the soul that we can't do it without Jesus. As we go through uncertain times, being away from our church, being away from the Blessed Sacrament, being away from each other, and with death's dark valley ahead of us, Pray Psalm 23. Pray Psalm 23. Then lift up our medical community, who is working day in and out to care for those who are sick and who are burning the candle at both ends to find a cure for this virus that is spreading throughout the world. Pray Psalm 23, because there are going to be days ahead when you feel like you are passing through the valley of the shadow of death and where you will feel as if there are enemies on every side. Pray Psalm 23, because you will be tempted to think that we can find our own direction in a time like this. When in fact, if we look close enough at ourselves, we might find that we don't have any idea what our next step should be. And pray Psalm 23 for the dying and deceased that they may finally have rest in Jesus' heavenly pasture. I urge you, friends and neighbors, pray Psalm 23 this week. When you find happiness and joy, when you are down and distraught, when you are somewhere in between, hold on for dear life to Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. For the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not be in want. He makes us to lie down in green pastures and leads us beside the still waters. He revives our souls. He leads us in right pathways for his name's sake. Lo, the walk to the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For, his, for he is with us. His rod and his staff comfort us. He spreads the table before us in the presence of our enemies. He anoints our head with oil, our cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Together let us confess the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, out of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and in his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and in the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your 
your holy Catholic Church. That, that we all may be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name, name may be glorified by all people. Remembering Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, Presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Bishop Larry Benfield, and Father Mark Harris. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our works may find favor in your sight. Remembering Kathy, Vincent, Dee Dee, Madeline, Debbie, Henry, Marilyn, James, David, Kyle, Robin, Bob, Bryce, Dorothy, Carrie, Elizabeth and baby Valerie, Maria, Barry, Judy, Scotty, Janet, Jessica, Don and Kathy, and for all su suffering from natural and man-made disasters and those persecuted for their faith. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered, delivered from their distress. distress. Remembering Mary and Carter Rogers, William Newton, Maxine Newton, give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light perpetual, perpetual shine upon them. them. We pray for the birthday of Olivia Simpson. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us that peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace and peace. Peace and peace. Peace and peace. Peace and peace. Peace and Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the Most High. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live them to know. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. 
in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us through our folds to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Keep this, your family, O Lord, in your never-failing love that through the valley of the darkness of the shadow of death we may fear no evil, but know that you are ever with us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. 